comes to writing and picking stuff, I um, obviously always recommend doing it to a metronome or a drum machine. Ideally, the best thing that really helped me in my playing was getting a, a recording set up. So something like Cubase, Pro Tools, Logic, um, or GarageBand. And getting in the habit of recording yourself and having to record you know, more than one guitar track and match them and be as tight as possible. And obviously, the main thing is it forces you to play in time with either a metronome, some programmed drums, uh, or anything like that. So, um, I'd, I'd kind of just recommend uh, picking out some rhythms or just down picking kind of stuff like. Picking, I'd kind of hold my pick in the most kind of traditional way. Um, it's always good to practice palm ewing um, when you're doing any kind of picking, uh, just because it forces some muscles that you don't normally feel working when you're doing it um, unmuted. So whenever I used to practice scales, I used to run up and down kind of. I found that when I started trying to do it palm muted. I wasn't quite as fast, um, so from then on I always kind of practice both uh, equally. When it comes to riffing and stuff, just trying to play everything uh, down picked or uh, like I say, always palm muted. Even when you're just practicing, even if the riff doesn't cause for everything being palm muted, it really does help, um, like I say, bring out different muscles in your forearm that you don't really feel activated when you're just doing kind of. <laughs> Um, so it forces you to have a lot more control. So what I'd recommend doing is just kind of practicing uh, long periods of down picking. And when you're practicing not to do it, tensing up, just trying to do really loose um, kind of movements, but very consistent. Try and always match the same uh, pick attack and everything like that. One thing that you really do need to consider is um, your string gauges and your picks and stuff. Um, I did a video that you can watch here, which is about my um, uh, how I approach like choosing string gauges and stuff and what works best for us. Um, so check that out maybe, but uh, it's good to have fairly tight strings. If you're trying to play thrashy stuff and you've got nines, um, you're going to struggle. In fact, um, this goes back, like I say, if you watched the, uh, the video on string gauges that I did, but um, I used to use 10 to 52 strings which are really tight for standard E tuning, especially on the low strings at least. Um, and then when it came to recording, uh, our first album kind of realized that they have quite a scratchy, scrapey tone to them. Uh, depending on some riffs, it came out quite uh, a bit more than we'd like. So I switched to uh, 10s in the studio, 10 to 46s. And uh, because I've been so used to the tension of the strings, when it came to um, using lighter strings, I found my muscles in my wrist, I absolutely destroyed them on the first day. I just had all sorts of aches just because uh, I wasn't used to having to use even more control to try and control these flimsy strings, or what I felt were flimsy. And um, I play a happy medium now, which is 11 to 49s. Um, but it's something you need to consider when you're trying to do fast picked kind of stuff. So if you're in E, if you're trying to play along to any of our stuff, use um, at least 46 on the one. I always use really thick, or well, relatively thick picks. These are 1.14 Dunlop picks, just the standard Tortex ones. Um, I never bother with jazz picks. I always stick with man size and uh, just pick as hard as possible. Uh, the whole thing, for me, my approach to rhythm playing, uh, it needs to sound aggressive. And if you're using some tiny little jazz picks and light strings and you just pick like this, It's not going to sound aggressive no matter how much gain you have or what the riffs are. You really need to just dig in and... Uh, practicing with uh, low gain is great for obviously building up, you know, trying to... You really want to aim to be squeezing the tone out of the amp, you know. If you've got like a low gain sound like this with my guitar rolled off... You still want to be aim aiming to try and get the distortion out of 
out there somehow, out of the amp, out of the pickups, and the way to do that, half of it is in the sound of the pickups and the amp and everything, the other half is coming from your right hand, so... So as much as I recommend, you know, playing really aggressively, picking hard and everything, obviously you don't want to injure yourself and uh, get, you know, tendon stress or anything like that, so what you want to do is just Practice at speeds that you're comfortable with and just don't aim for speed, aim for endurance. That's the most important thing. So if you're just doing a uh, tempo that you can do down picked for ages, just like. <laughs> try and relax into it, try and make every note even. Don't, maybe don't pick too hard, maybe not as hard as you might when, you know, when you're recording. Just a good consistent uh, picking kind of weight. <laughs> Every now and then, it's always good to chuck in some kind of triplet stuff. But basically, like I say, if you stick to the endurance side of it, it's kind of like working out or training for a marathon. Like you, uh, you, you don't go into it with no practice and just try and run as, you know, keep up with everyone else. Um, you practice and build up to that. Uh, and and pick like when it comes to fast picking and riffing and stuff, a lot of it is endurance and that will lead to speed later on, but that should be your main concern, like I say, just endurance. To try and practice just doing... for a straight minute. Um, it shouldn't feel too stressful or too strenuous. If it does, or if you're feeling it too tense and you can't keep up, you're going too fast. Only you know how fast uh, you, can, you can do it. It depends how long you've been playing. Um, what your technique's like. You know, you, you just need to be realistic and set yourself small goals instead of just trying to aim to be the fastest guitarist and trying to just go straight into playing fast. Uh, you need to build up a really solid foundation of playing. So what that means is, you know, if you can only pick at like 150 BPM or something, um, then you just need to be working towards getting to 160. Don't even think about trying to get to, you know, 200 or, or above um, until you've got that covered. So, like I say, there's, there's absolutely no point in trying to rush into play super fast stuff if you can't even handle doing it cleanly and consistently um, at much slower speeds. And obviously, playing clean is a huge, uh, huge aspect to it. You can check out my video for like how to play as cleanly as possible, um, which I did a while back. Basically, like I say, you're aiming for endurance, endurance and cleanness and consistency is always the aim when you're practicing and then speed just comes with time once you've got something nailed and you're relaxed and you're into it your your hands can just move faster and they learn you know to go a bit faster over time but if you just rush straight into going fast you're going to get all kinds of problems you're going to either adopt bad technique or you're going to you know just strain your wrist and stress yourself out like say if, if you compare it to running a marathon without doing any training um, you know, if you do it on any way, you're going to ache for the next few days. But if you do it without training at all, you'll be, you know, done for like a week or two just with muscle aches and pains and stuff. And that, that still happens with guitar playing, even though it's, you know, only smaller muscles and stuff. <laughs> So obviously rhythm playing is uh, the most important thing, it's the most important thing to me at least uh, when it comes to guitar playing. I always consider myself a rhythm player first and then um, lead second, but really it, it, you should just en encompass both and like one thing you know kind of melds into another one. A lot of riffs we have um, kind of have uh, elements of lead playing and rhythm playing mixed together and a lot of it comes from uh, I just always like to try and pick every note. Um, whether it's for solos or when I'm practicing at least. Like it, when I was used to just run up and down scales for practice, picking every note was just something that I wanted to be able to do. Doesn't mean I, doesn't mean I always do choose to do that, but it's just going to be much more well-rounded as a player. So if you are into just playing all kinds of stuff and practicing scales and, and leads and stuff, always try and pick every note because that's always going to help your rhythm playing and your lead playing. And like I say, sometimes they tie into each other. But um, for rhythm playing, it's all about just consistency and building up stamina more than speed, and speed will just come with time. It's better to just try and kind of stick to just keeping a consistent, um, relatively, you know, assertive, and I use that word quite a lot when it comes to picking, but relatively like, assertive and powerful picking without being too strenuous and without tensing. You want to feel relaxed when you're practicing, and if you, if you are tensing up, then you need to go slower or just stop. 
if you've overdone it. Uh, with down picking, the reason why down picking is so important is because um, it has a much more um, consistent sound um, than just doing. No matter how good you are at uh, picking, either you know alternate or, or whatever, down picking is always going to sound more consistent. It sounds way better for recording. Um, so whenever you can down pick, I highly recommend doing it. Like I say, especially for recordings, uh, you might not notice the difference straight away in terms of you know listening out for the difference in consistency. But most people can kind of hear that, and um, it is something just to kind of work towards. So uh, when it comes to down picking. Like I said, if you can only really do it at this kind of speed, all you want to do is try and aim to do that for a minute, and um, you know, without cramping up too much. Without you know, maybe at the end of it, you might want to shake your wrist off, but you should feel kind of um, like you can just keep going. Uh, if you can do that, you know, practice that consistently. Practice with things you are comfortable with, because it's all muscle memory. It's all going in. It's all going to help build up. Um, your stamina and stuff. So then increase the BPM by like 10 BPM, you know, within the week. And keep going up and up and up. And when it comes to like all the triplet stuff, there's there's kind of like a happy medium, like a this kind of area of like 180 BPM to 200 where um, it just feels a lot more easy to kind of bounce off the strings, whereas as opposed to doing it slowly find you're actually slightly adjusting the way you pick and how the muscles in your wrist and hand are moving. But it is really important to try and get that kind of stuff down as well. Another thing to do like once um, you've you know got comfortable with a, a certain down picking tempo, instead of trying to get faster with that, try and introduce like different rhythms. And try and build up that kind of stamina, and try and try and like uh, just get a rhythm that you can kind of repeat and loop, even if it's just really simple. Like always mixing up, or just again trying to do just uh, consistent sixteenth notes. So, like I say, the aim is not to get this as fast as possible. You want to aim to just get that as consistent as possible so really even in terms of your tempo making sure it's really you know tapping if you're left handed tapping your left foot speed will come just keep you know working on being consistent and keep it up for again if you can keep this up for like a minute a uh, hugely important thing to do as well before I forget is remember to breathe whilst you're doing it and not a lot of guitarists tend to do this uh, all the time um, is kind of either just have a bit of a weird breathing pattern when they're playing or just hold their breath for long periods. So try and you know, work on breathing uh, you know, consistently as well. It might sound a bit weird, but obviously you need the oxygen to keep your muscles from tensing up and stuff. So uh, make sure you're breathing and uh, just try and, you know, it's all about stamina.